What if you could enjoy a delicious chocolatey dessert without feeling guilty? We've got the recipe and we're going to show you how to make it. Plus, volunteering with one of the area's most recognized sports organizations. And it's all about art here at Millennium Place. Stick around, it's all on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in the Scotia Creek Gallery in Millennium Place. The current exhibit, Home is Where the Art Is, is a collection of work brought together to reflect the notion of home. Now, the Whistler Arts Council always has fresh local artwork for you to enjoy. But what about doing it yourself? That's coming up later in the show. Aside from the arts, Whistler is known as a world-class recreation facility. And thanks to the Whistler Adaptive Sports Program, these these activities are available for all to enjoy, but they wouldn't be able to do it without the help of more than 150 volunteers. Today we're going to introduce you to a volunteer from Down Under. He moved to Whistler for a world-class adventure and it's turned into an experience of a lifetime. I get a little bit of a reward, a good feeling when I help out other people. Go guys. <laughs> they are splashes of success for both the athletes and the volunteer leading the group. Um, okay guys, so we're going to do uh, breaststroke now, we're going to do four laps. But I want them to enjoy themselves, I want them to uh, exceed their own expectations of themselves, sort of break out of the comfort zone, expand it, that sort of thing. Okay guys, we're going to do uh, two minutes of treading water. Paul Hunting has been volunteering with the Whistler Adaptive Sports Program four days a week since moving from Australia. He came for a working holiday but dedicates his free time to helping these athletes. In turn, they help him feel connected with his new community far from home. Over the Christmas break I had about two weeks that we had off and I was just working, fell ill and uh, wasn't volunteering and then came back after two weeks and felt like the spark came back in to my life. So. Um, yeah, it's good. Guiding his swimmers through a series of exercises, Hunting is among the 180 active community members who volunteer with Whistler Adaptive, a non-profit multi-sport organization that provides 16 different sports programs for individuals with sensory, physical and cognitive disabilities. Well, sport is such a huge catalyst for so many different aspects of individuals' lives, be it um, learning about socialization, uh, using it to enhance vocational training, and, uh, and just building self-confidence and awareness. It's a great program if you want to get into all the activities and get involved with doing stuff and meeting new friends. Okay guys, let's play some games. It's not about instruction or technique, but routine. Volunteers are there for support, helping athletes maximize their abilities. Yeah, he's a good help, yeah. Good job, Paul. <laughs> Paul is a really, really easy going, um, easy to get along with type of fellow, and plus he's really good at all the sports, so they really look to him as a peer as well as a coach. It can get competitive, they are athletes after all, but in the end, hunting keeps these swimmers focused on having fun. The Whistler Adaptive Sports Program offers 16 different winter and summer sports for athletes to enjoy. If you'd like to be a little more active, share your passion for sport with an athlete and be involved in your community, then maybe volunteering is right for you. You can find out more information at whistleradaptive.com and a warning, it's guaranteed fun. Something singer-songwriter Cassandra Bangel knows a lot about. The Coquitlam native has just released her new EP album, Four Chambers, and our Paul McClellan got a private performance. My name is Cassandra Bangle and I am a musician from Coquitlam. I play piano, guitar, ukulele and I sing and I use the loop pedal in my live performances so I get to transform myself from a solo performer into practically a full band.
Cassandra Bangle has been busy lately, primarily with the release of her new EP, Four Chambers. We were able to visit her home studio for a listen to the first track, Still Afraid of the Dark. I took a walk into the woods one summer evening, uh, and I wanted to see how far I could get uh, before I was just too completely freaked out that I had to turn around and run back. And I kind of have a fear of being alone in the dark a little bit. So when I got home, I guess I was just kind of buzzed from the experience and I was kind of on that creative plane. So I sat down at the piano and started working out the lyrics and the chords in the chorus. And that's how that song began. New EP, Four Chambers, what's this one like? There's kind of a theme, it seems. Four Chambers is kind of a concept album, but the concept was sort of accidental, and I almost discovered it in a way after the fact, because I realized that every song on the EP had a very distinct emotion behind it. Um, so the first one represented fear, the second one represented doubt, the third one represented hope, and the last one, love. Just out of nowhere, I connected it to this uh, idea about the heart and how the heart, the human heart has four chambers. And so it's almost as if each song kind of, you could slot it into a different chamber. And because the heart is the symbol of, I consider it to be the symbol of human emotion, uh, you know, it just made sense to make that connection. To hide the feelings inside, it's hard not to cry and rip the tear zone shut. Writing songs is just an essential part of who I am, so it's, it's something that I'll, I'll continue doing, you know, no matter what's thrown at me in my life. Um, and in the future, there's definitely going to be a new album. And uh, I'm working on some demos right now that I'm really excited about, and I've taken, I've taken a little more control over my sound, so I'm dabbling in the production side of things, so I'm getting a better idea of what it is I really want to hear with my own music. So I'm really excited to share that. That full-length album is expected in 2015, and she's touring Canada as well as the South Pacific in the coming months. Visit CassandraBangle.com to find out where you can see her next. In Coquitlam, I'm Paul McClellan for Shaw TV. Cassandra wrote her first song when she was just 12. Can you believe it? Well, if you'd like to see this story or maybe one of our full episodes again, everything is available for you online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. It's so healthy. It's wholesome, it's easy and delicious. Dessert can be delicious and healthy when you use raw, organic ingredients. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it, lev it. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month, and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today.
Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in the Scotia Creek Gallery at Millennium Place. We're enjoying the current exhibit, Home is Where the Art Is. And later in the show, we'll be heading downstairs to meet some aspiring artists. You may see their work on these walls in the coming years. From arts and culture to health and wellness, all are important things in life. Yes, if you're like me, you enjoy being healthy and active, but you do get those chocolatey cravings. What if I told you you could have the best of both worlds? Yes, a chocolatey dessert made with healthy ingredients. How about finishing off your day with a chocolate pudding? And you'll know what's in it when you make it yourself. Here's how. We are hanging out at Nestor's Market in Whistler and Sarah, Nestor's offers quite a few wellness talk sessions. What are those? Uh, the wellness talks, you know, it's really geared towards helping the community. And every Thursday at 10.30 in the morning, we have uh, half hour, hour sessions that sometimes comprise of um, recipes, vitamins, mineral supplement talks, etc. All free sessions for the community to better their health. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. And today, uh, you are going to show me how to make a raw chocolate pudding, and you're telling me it's healthy. It's so healthy. It's wholesome, it's easy, and delicious. All right, so how do we make it? Okay, so we have five simple ingredients. We have the um, coconut sugar. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the raw cacao. Okay. And then we have the um, avocado. An avocado. Yeah, and then we have the, the flavor assisters, the Himalayan crystal salt. Salt and chocolate, they go well together. They go so well together. All and right. then, of course, the cinnamon, just for added flavor depth. Wow, okay. So a little salt, a little cinnamon. Okay, so okay. how do we put it all together? Okay, so it's so simple. You just want to have a nice ripe avocado. And when you slice into the avocado, you know, you just slice it in half and pit the avocado. It's pretty loose already. Right. So just take that out. And then you just want to spoon the avocado innards into your food processor. You can also use a blender, but I recommend a food processor. Okay. It just blends the ingredients um, a lot. It's not better. as moist, so a food processor can blend everything. Okay. E exactly, Heather. Um, so then that you just add the avocado. I have about um, seven tablespoons of raw cacao, fair trade. And then, of course, I'm going to add about half a cup of the coconut sugar, fair trade as well. Great. And if you wanted to make this completely raw, you would use the agave because right. coconut sugar isn't raw. Okay. Okay. And then um, I've already ha added some of the cinnamon in there and, and the salt, so it's already in there. Just a sprinkle of those two ingredients. Just a pinch, exactly. And then blend it up. It's only that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. Now this, um, this actually feeds two people. Okay. And you can garnish it with some fruits, such as uh, raspberries, strawberries, or bananas. It's delicious. All organic. You can get all organic ingredients if you want. Yes, yeah, so you can get all organic ingredients if you want, if that's how you roll. If not, then, you know, do what you can. It's still going to taste amazing. Nice and easy. And here we have it, our finished product. You've already scooped one that you've made into the bowl. I have, yes. And you garnish it with bananas, yeah. so a little bit of fruit can add to it. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to uh, sample this here. Avocado, chocolate, and salt. That tastes like an interesting mixture. Yep. Unctuous, delicious, wholesome, nutritious. <laughs> Perfect way to finish off an evening with healthy and delicious. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. The chocolate and salt make for a perfect combination, but the avocado really adds a unique texture and taste. And don't wait for dessert, that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Well, it's time for this week's edition of West Coast Style. We're lighting up for spring and becoming a little more playful. Lisa Tant of Holt Renfrew met up with our Aaron Shaw to give some tips and tricks for a new spring wardrobe. Need a little spring in your step after a colder than normal winter? Well, we're at Holt Renfrew today with one of Canadian fashion's most recognizable names, Lisa Tant, and she's giving us all the tips for spring fashion and how to wear the trends. And this season's looks are fresh and thankfully very comfortable. 
Now with Canadians doing so well at the Olympics this year, it's no surprise that we've got some sport-inspired attire. And you know, we've really seen such incredible advancements in high-tech performance fabric. This is a nylon that before you might have only seen in sporty gear. And so this has a sport feel to it, but I always say to everybody, it's not about the gym, it's about fashion. So this has a great sporty feel, goes with really comfortable um, Todd sandals, and mm -hmm. we put it with a Longchamp tote bag. This is from Lead of a Day. I would also love this if Bobby wore it open and she had a pair of skinny jeans underneath with a striped top. So again, thinking one piece, how can I wear it a whole bunch of different ways? Now patterns have been huge for the past few yes. seasons and they remain big, but how are they different this year? It's the idea of a bigger, bolder scale pattern, but that doesn't have to mean that it's scary looking. I thought this was so sweet. This piece is from Red Valentino and it's mixing the dots with the pattern, with a bit of a lace feel, a bit of a ruffle, but it's not too much. And what I did though is put it with more of, more of an edgy fashion shoe. These are Manola Blahnik. If you put it with a white pretty shoe, it might look too much like a wedding and you may yeah. not want to go that route. Mm -hmm. I like the edge that a black leather sandal gives to it. Oh, I like your stuff. And since spring is the season of renewal, we're seeing the return of black and white. I can't say enough about black and white. It's so classic. We all have loads of it in our wardrobe. But this season, it's how you put it together. So not necessarily black pants, white top. It's the combination. I have it here in this Etro jacket. Ah. Lillian is wearing it in an Aquilano Ramondi dress. Beautiful. It just makes a big statement, but it's easy to understand. It's easy to wear ah. and can just go right across your wardrobe. I like that idea that it is. it, it does translate to the masses. They understand so black and white. They, we, I we, understand yeah. black and white. And it's so easy to wear. It doesn't matter how old you are, what Ooh. size you are. It always looks crisp and timeless. This time, just try mixing in a few black and white patterns. And this could be one of my favorite looks yes. because it's so simple, but I'm afraid of it. It's pink. You know what? I am not a girly girl either. I love this pink blazer. And how you make it cool and modern is putting all the kind of pastels together. So oh. the jacket is from Alexander McQueen. Mm -hmm. This is a very light cashmere sweater from Holt's own oh, collection. Wonderful. It comes in pink, pale blue, gray. The baggy boyfriend jean, which is so comfortable and I think looks a million times better than the skinny jean. Alexander Wang heels and a Givenchy bag. And then overall you get this really cool girl street style kind of feel. Mm. The silhouette looks familiar and I think people like that and so you've only played with one element to bring it up a notch. And it just has that cool girl feel like you haven't tried too hard. And that wow. is the key to fashion. Thanks Lisa. I'm Erin Shaw for West Coast Style. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go See to Sky. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a comment about our show or maybe even a story idea, get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go see to sky. Later in the show. My classes aren't structured. It's more of a be creative and be who you are. It's all about art during March break at Millennium Place. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV volunteer program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Hi folks, it's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph at Levitt Machinery. They sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levitt. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world. Daily on Shaw TV.
Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, spending some time in the Scotia Creek Gallery in Millennium Place. Now, this exhibit, Home is Where the Art Is, features many local pieces, and it runs until March 28th. But if you've already enjoyed this beautiful work or find yourself looking for something to do the next time you're in Vancouver, why not check out the Museum of Anthropology? The exhibit, The Marvelous Real Art from Mexico, may change the way you look at art. The creator really makes you think, is it beautiful, creative, artistic, or is it something else? Our Johanna Ward tells us all about it. Marvelous real. So it's not that it's beautiful, it's not that it's ugly, it's just interesting because it's strange? Yes, it's this interconnection between the mundane and the magical. Marvelous Real is a term that was introduced by Alejo Carpentier, the Cuban, great Cuban novelist and musicologist, and he really used it as part, as in opposition to surrealism. Curator Dr. Nicola Lavelle sees artist Alfonso Patino's piece, Schools of Art, as the visual key to this exhibit. This really talks about Western art movements like surrealism, or in this case, pop art, whereby you have... Warhol, 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 Warhol. Warhol. <laughs> and not just Warhol, but yeah. the pop art in general. Yeah. And what you have is you get these Western silos, these ways in which certain artists are included and others are excluded. Instead, the marvelous reel challenges classifications, arguing that everything is art. And how do you feel about that? Do you think things should be labeled and put into those little boxes, or do you like it better, this idea of... Busting open the doors. Oh no, absolutely busting open the doors and also sort of moving away from this fetishization that is constructs, you know, the difference between art and artifact or the ethnographic and the modern. So how to organize an exhibit that spans 85 years from 1926 to 2011 and features 54 diverse artworks. So we have ontologies, mythologies, ecologies, technologies and archaeologies and these are what are organizing the exhibition. You've completely transformed this space. Absolutely, transformed it from a contemporary art space with white walls, polished concrete floors into this Baroque palace. A palace in the Audane Gallery at the Museum of Anthropology, full of riches to discover and rediscover. Wow, this is quite something. Where did all these shoes come from? The shoes came from a, a, a contemporary archaeology by the artist Sandra Cabriada. The piece, the installation piece, is called Calzada de Alta Resistencia, uh, footwear of high resistance. And she encountered all these uh, individual lost, stray, forgotten, discarded shoes um, in and around the streets and squares of Mexico City. Does it make you wonder where the pair is? Do you ever think? <laughs> there is one pair, actually. There's also one Frida Kahlo. In this particular work, it's one of the only collages known that Frida made. She's absent, but it's still very much considered to be a self-portrait. A famous Frida quote, I never painted dreams, I painted my own reality. In the marvelous reel, no one's reality or worldview is expected to be the same. And different cultures have different ways about the thinking about being in the world. And I think it's absolutely essential that we're equipped, that we have the language to, to understand the, the thinking, to understand how we can engage with multiple peoples from many different worlds. They're part of these everyday, our everyday global realities. Now that exhibit runs until March 30th at the Museum of Anthropology at UBC. Now viewing these unique exhibits may spark your interest to create something yourself. Or perhaps you may want your youngster to be more creative. Well the Whistler Arts Council hosts all sorts of fun art workshops and programs for adults and children. But if you're looking for something for your youngster to do during the March break, they're hosting an art and theater spring break camp that runs the full week. It's all about becoming more creative and thinking outside the box. A blank page is where it all begins. Simple guidelines and encouragement, but no concrete rules. It's about thinking out of the box and being able to create their own creations from their own journeys. Prepping their work area, their imaginations are already racing. Even the instructor is excited to see what these youngsters will create, given the freedom to do what they want. That's why Lena Mawson chooses to teach children. Now I brought art class in a bag. 
It's just a really great environment to be able to help them with different techniques and let them explore different colors. Today's theme is going to be, I think we should call it like spring fling. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay. Mawson runs some of the many art workshops offered through the Whistler Arts Council. Her classes always begin here, on the carpet, where the young artists can speak freely of what they want to create, helping one another with ideas and expanding their imagination. Yeah. But you could have a snowy field yard with like a crocus coming up from the snow. Yeah, but I, mean, like, I think that just by talking about what we're looking at creating today, it gets their minds flowing and in a direction where I don't have to actually lead them. They can take their minds in their own directions and come up with something totally different. That is as far as the formal lesson plan goes. From here, students create from scratch as free spirits. My classes aren't structured. It's more of a be creative and be who you are, which is also my mantra for them as they go through life. Splashes of bright color and unique brush strokes. They see it simply as painting, but their instructor hopes the underlying lessons will stay with them, with or without a brush in hand. At the end of class, we'll take a look at everybody's and we'll be able to see, and they'll be able to see, that we all started off with sort of the same idea, but we all went off in different directions. And that's what I'm hoping that they do in their lives as well. Art lends a support to the creative mind, something Mawson knows firsthand and wants others to discover. Crafting with students helped her get through six long years of an adoption process, but when her daughter finally arrived, it added even more color to a passion she already had. It just brings joy that she's able to be able to have all the tools she needs to put together her own little piece of work and it will never be criticized. It would always be um, honored. It's, it's amazing to watch her work. Crafting in workshops run by the Whistler Arts Council, these young creators are supported and encouraged to work together, but remain as individuals, remain creative and self-expressive. Putting their thoughts on paper and using all different types of media to do that gives them the free expression that I think kids need and deserve nowadays. Now, Lena will be teaching the art portion of the Art and Theatre Spring Break Camp here at Millennium Place. Now, if you want more information, there are still a few more spots to sign up your youngster for the full week camp. Visit artswhistler.com for more details. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See the Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice.
Join, book, go with Moto, Vancouver's only local car sharing co-op. What's car sharing? It's thousands of people sharing the cost and access to hundreds of cars. Car sharing offers a reliable alternative to car ownership, fits your lifestyle, and saves you money. With 300 cars, trucks, and even cargo vans, Moto offers the lowest rates in Metro Vancouver. And booking a Moto is easy, online or by phone. Join, book, go. Learn more at moto.coop. It started out like any other spring morning. A morning that I'll never forget. I was an energetic and adventurous four-year-old. I'd been an electrician for 30 years. Without warning, our lives were changed forever. My dog's bark woke me up, and the house was filled with smoke. The pain was unbearable. It's physical and emotional scars. You don't grow up thinking you'll be a burn survivor. It just happens. But there is hope. We support burn survivors on their long journey to recovery. Give today 